Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to A Deeper Dive into African American Literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison. But these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of Black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 19, Danzy Senna. Danzy Senna is actually married to Percival Everett, who was featured in the previous installment of this series. But well before the two of them met, she was already a celebrated novelist and essayist, and has made a name for herself by producing fiction that examines the complexity of mixed-race identity in contemporary America. Senna was born in Boston to a white mother and a black father, both of whom were politically engaged writers. Not surprisingly, Senna herself demonstrated an interest in literature from an early age and studied it at both the undergraduate and graduate levels. Her debut, Caucasia, appeared in 1998 and immediately received glowing reviews and nominations for numerous awards. It remains her most popular work to date, though each of her subsequent three books of fiction and her memoir, Where Did You Sleep Last Night, about her parents' complicated marriage, have been well regarded by critics and readers alike. She teaches literature and creative writing at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. Birdie, the narrator and protagonist of Senna's debut novel, resembles her creator in being the child of an interracial couple who grows up in Boston during a period of intense racial turmoil. The excerpt from Caucasia that follows shows how that context affected the ways in which she and her sister perceived their own identities. A long time ago, I disappeared. One day I was here, the next I was gone. It happened as quickly as all that. One day I was playing schoolgirl games with my sister and our friends in a Roxbury playground. The next I was a nobody, just a body without a name or a history, sitting beside my mother in the front seat of our car, moving forward on the highway, not stopping. And when I stopped being a nobody, I would become white, white as my skin, hair, and bones allowed. My body would fill in the blanks, tell me who I should become, and I would let it speak for me. This was back when Boston still came in black and white, yellowing around the edges. You could just make out the beginnings of color, red-eyed teenagers with afros like halos around their faces, whispering something about power and ofe to one another as they shuffled to catch the bus, a man's mocha hand on a woman's pale knee. I disappeared into America, the easiest place to get lost, dropped off without a name, without a record, with the only body I traveled in, and a memory of something lost. This is what I remember. Before I ever saw myself, I saw my sister. When I was too small for mirrors, I saw her as the reflection that proved my own existence. Back then, I was content to see only Cole, three years older than me, and imagine that her face, cinnamon-skinned, curly-haired, serious, was my own. It was her face above me always, waving toys at me, cooing at me, whispering to me, pinching me when she was angry, and I was the easiest target. That face was me, and I was that face, and that was how the story went. We even spoke our own language. My father described the language as high-speed patois. Cole and I just called it elemento, after our favorite letters in the alphabet. For more information about Senna and her view of America at the time she wrote Caucasia, follow the link at the top of this page to the text of her famous essay, The Mulatto Millennium. Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of a deeper dive into African-American literature. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, as well as to David Summerstein and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio. Can you hear it? I can hear it.